This is Economy Watch. What you need to know about New Zealand's economic life today. Brought to you by interest.co.nz. Kia ora and welcome to Thursday's Economy Watch where we follow the economic events and trends that affect New Zealand. I'm David Chaston and this is the international edition from interest.co.nz and today we leave with news two big central banks have been active in their signalling over the past 24 hours. First up today, as many expected, the US Fed sent a clear signal that they're more open to a September rate cut. That first came from changed wording in their no-change statement that was more balanced between the two aspects of their mandate, inflation and jobs. Powell then confirmed a potential September rate cut at his press conference. This was largely what was assumed in advance, and there's been no major financial market reaction, but the reactions that there were were positive. The US dollar slipped marginally on the news, the S&P 500 rose after already being up sharply, and the benchmark US 10-year yield fell three basis points. The US ADP jobs report came in lower than the expected 150,000 gain. It reported a gain of just 122,000 in July. This is the precursor report to the official non-farm powers report, which is expected to show 175,000 gain when it's reported on Saturday New Zealand time. The ADP report slowing is consistent with the Fed's expectation that the labour market is not pushing undue labour market pressure on the US economy. And the Chicago PMI came in very much as expected, also not putting upward pressure on inflation from the heartland factory sector. And neither are American pending home sales. They may have risen in June from May, but they're still lower year on year. However, mortgage applications are still shrinking, despite mortgage interest rates staying well below 7%. And the Bank of Japan actually has raised its official policy rate, from 0.1% to 0.25% with a 15 basis points hike late yesterday. They also said they will cut their bond buying activity. This has been seen as an aggressive mood that signals the central bank's growing confidence in the recovery of the domestic economy and its concern about the sharply weaker yen. The yen appreciated significantly after that. Equities rose and their benchmark bond yields rose. Taiwan's GDP expanded 5.1% real in the second quarter of 2024, high but less than the very high 6.6% in the first quarter. Both were the best results since the pandemic recovery, and back to their long golden economic expansion between 1994 and 2008. And China's official factory PMI fell slightly into a further contraction. Their official services PMI fell as well to a minor expansion. Both were about what was expected, but neither is very promising. In Europe, the euro area inflation rate unexpectedly edged up to 2.6% in July from 2.5% in June, when forecasts expected it would slow to 2.4%. The larger economies kept it elevated. The smaller ones generally reported lower rates. And the second quarter's inflation rate in Australia rose to 3.8%, exactly as analysts expected. Their June month inflation indicator came in at the same 3.8%. But markets seem to have focused on the trimmed mean quarter-on-quarter rate of 0.8%, which was lower than expected, and concluded that the RBA is likely to hold rates unchanged next week. The US Treasury 10-year yield is now just on 4.10% and down another 4 basis points from yesterday. And the price of gold will start today up another $20 from yesterday at $2,426 an ounce. And oil prices are three dollars higher at just over seventy seven fifty a barrel in the US, while international Brent price just over eighty dollars and fifty cents a barrel. Rising Middle East tensions are behind this move up. And the Kiwi dollar starts today up another forty basis points to fifty nine point four US cents. Against the Aussie we're almost a cent higher at ninety one point one Australian cents. Against the Euro, we're another forty basis points higher at fifty five Euro cents. That all means our trade-weighted index starts today at 68.5 and up 40 basis points from yesterday. And the Bitcoin price starts today at $66,595 and up 1.1% from yesterday. Volatility over the past 24 hours has been modest, also up plus or minus 1.1%. You can find links to the articles mentioned today in our show notes, and you can get more news affecting the economy in New Zealand from interest.co.nz. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston. And we'll do this again tomorrow.